Let's talk about this piece of code. So I've uh, already drawn onto my diagram the arrays because I've learned that I am really bad at drawing arrays on a diagram, so I saved you having to watch me do that. They still look sort of awful. Uh, I will draw in the indices. What I want to do is talk about what happens if we create pointers that point at array elements. And it turns out that we're going to go down a whole weird rabbit hole with this because we should know by now that we can make pointers that point at anything. And the elements of an array are not special, they're just locations to store a piece of data, except that they're all kept together. So the array A is just four ints. Each of the individual elements of A is just an int value like anything else. If I create a variable int x, that's no different than element one of A, except that it's not combined with a bunch of other things. And so it's perfectly valid for me to create some pointer, for example, a pointer P of type int star, and then set it to contain an arrow pointing at a index zero. All right, and I can also create a pointer called q of type float star. I'm really admiring. This is a very nicely drawn q. I, I have never been able to draw q that well, and even on a screen. This is fantastic. I hope I don't mess up the rest of the video somehow and have to redo it. Um, and I have q point at element index one of the array b. Okay, so I can do that. I can make pointers that point at elements of an array. And of course, to create the pointer, I do exactly the same thing as I would do for any other pointer. I first subscript the array, because we know that the expression a sub zero or b sub one behaves no differently than a variable of that type. So a sub zero would be a variable of type int, b sub one would be like a variable of type float. And then I just create an arrow pointing at them with the ampersand. That's great. And in a lot of other languages, we could talk about pointers, we could talk about arrays, and that would sort of be the end of the story. But it turns out that there is a dark and complicated relationship between pointers and arrays. And we're going to spend several videos exploring that. And the connection between pointers and arrays fundamentally isn't that surprising. We've noticed this funny way I draw my arrays on the diagram that looks a lot like a certain kind of pointer. But before we can really understand what pointers do for arrays, we have to talk about what we can really do with pointers. So the first thing, I'm going to create two new pointers here. We can see on line 19 that I'm doing that. I think I'm going to put them in the middle. So there's R, and then over here I have a pointer called T. All right, and R is an int star, and uh, T is a float star. And so we sort of already can tell that R is going to have something to do with P and T is going to have something to do with Q. Okay, fine. So what can we do with these pointers? Well, first, we already know from talking about pointers um, a couple weeks ago that we could write something like this. R equals P. The type of R is in star. The type of P is in star. So the assignment is valid. Okay. Well, what would happen if I ran this? If I uncomment this piece of code, if I scroll up for some reason, if I uncomment this piece of code, what would actually happen? Well, let's see. Uh, I take whatever's in the box P, that would be this arrow, and I store it in R. All right, there we go, great. Um, but I don't want to do that. I want to observe that it's possible to do that, that of course I can store into R any pointer I want. I could even take something out of P and store it into R. That's a valid statement, but that's just the appetizer. That's not even the appetizer. That's the amuse-bouche. We've got to um, talk today about something a great deal more complicated and very scary looking. And the ultimate conclusion of this, a couple of videos later, what we're going to see is that all of that nice notation we've been using on arrays, in particular these square brackets, are secretly covering up a very strange and scary looking pointer operation. But we're going to begin by seeing the pointer operation in the wild. So I'm going to scroll down. You might actually want to pause the video and take a moment because everything is about to change. If you pause the video and appreciate the simplicity of life, you've come such a long way. In September, you didn't know about programming. And now here we are. It might be early November. Maybe it's late October still when you're watching this. And we're about to see something that is going to be earth shattering. So pause the video, take a moment, appreciate how far you've come. Maybe go for a walk around the block, enjoy the leaves falling on the ground if you're living somewhere where it's fall right now, or where there are deciduous trees that have leaves. Anyway, um, maybe take a moment to appreciate, and then we'll scroll down. All right, here we go. I, ho I hope you took it. You, you didn't believe me, but everything is going to change. Okay, so we'll scroll on down, and we'll take a look at these two statements. 
r equals p plus 1. So I want to assign a value to r. I want to assign, well, if this assignment is valid, I guess that means r is an int star. That means that this must be an int star. The rules for pointer assignment are absolute. You are only allowed to do the pointer assignment if the thing on the right-hand side has the same type as the thing on the left. And it turns out that it does. And I then want to assign t to be equal to q minus 1. Okay, so what am I doing here? Well, it shouldn't surprise you to learn that this thing, using the plus operator on a pointer, is called pointer arithmetic. But what does it do? So what is the value of p? I mean, we know how to evaluate an assignment statement. We, we evaluate the right-hand side first. Okay, so what's the value of p? The value of p is this arrow, an arrow pointing at this memory location. Okay, so what's the value of p plus 1? Well, what am I adding to, to what am I adding 1 to here? I'm, I'm saying add 1 to this thing. But this is an arrow. What does it mean to add a number to an arrow? And it turns out, if I ask for the value p plus 1, what I'm actually asking is for a different arrow. It makes sense because the right-hand side is supposed to be an int star. So p points to this memory location. p plus 1 will be an arrow pointing at the next memory location over. Now, there is some complexity to do with types here, in the sense that where the next memory location is does seem to depend on how big the thing is in memory. An int takes up more space in memory than, for example, a char. We're going to bypass that for now. It turns out that at the level of abstraction we need in 111, we don't care so much about that thing, so we'll just leave that alone. The key thing here is if I add a number to a pointer, to an arrow, what I'm actually doing is I'm moving the arrow along in space. So the arrow p plus 1 would be uh, an arrow pointing at wherever p points, but 1 to the right. So p points here. p plus 0, you could think, points here. p plus 1 points one position later. So there is p plus 1. r equals p plus 1. t equals q minus 1. Okay, so here's q. q plus 0 points to this element. Q plus 1 would point to this element. Q plus 2 would point to this element. But I want Q minus 1. And that just moves me in the other direction. It moves me 1 to the left. So there's the value of T. So T equals Q minus 1. Pointer arithmetic. Now, to be clear, you can only perform pointer arithmetic if one of the operands is a pointer and the other one is an integer of some kind. You can't add two pointers together. Um, that wouldn't make much sense. Uh, and you, obviously you can add two numbers, but that doesn't turn into a pointer. Pointer arithmetic is where one, but not both, of the operands are pointers. And the idea is when you perform this arithmetic, you are making a relative change to the value. So p points at some location. And you are saying, go to that location plus or minus a few. Plus 1, plus 2, plus 5, plus 10, or minus 1, minus 5, whatever. You can't add two pointers together because that's saying, you know, take, and take two different addresses and combine them. If I tell you to go to, you know, 123 Main Street and then, you know, go one door down, well, that's 124 Main Street or 125 Main Street. If I give you an address and then I tell you where to move relative to that address, well, that's decipherable. But if I say, could you go to the sum of 123 Main Street and and um, 1500 Shelbourne Street. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. How do I combine two completely different addresses? And the same thing's going on here. With pointer arithmetic, you take a pointer and you provide some numerical way of offsetting or moving relative to that value. Okay, but let's try running this. So uh, in my second, I guess I should have uh, called these step one and step two, but step one, p is 17, q is 3.1, so that's what we expected if we look at our diagram. Step two, r is equal to six, there we are, and uh, t is equal to 1.5. All right, so I was able to perform pointer arithmetic to manipulate uh, what these things point to. And just to be clear, I could of course say, let's do p plus, uh, oh, let's do q plus two. So t will now point to q plus 2, just to show that we can do this with things other than minus, plus or minus 1. Um, so that means that t now points to this, the value 5.5. So we'll save that, we'll take a look, and then I'm going to go back before um, I try my next, uh, oh, yeah, some sort of stray number showed up there. Um, 
before I try my next example. Okay, so there we go, star t is 5.5, great. So I'm gonna change that back because I'm gonna need this for my next example. t equals q minus one. So we can perform pointer arithmetic. And the reason this is so significant is it actually will turn out in a couple of videos that what an, ar an array in itself doesn't really mean that much to the C language. It turns out that all an array, when you ask the compiler to make you an array, all you're really asking for is a bunch of space and a special kind of pointer. And all of the things that we've grown used to with arrays, the ability to index them, for example, is actually just a feature of a pointer that's sort of coming through and a bunch of syntactic sugar to make it a bit more digestible for us. But what we should ask ourselves is, okay, wait a minute. So if I can add one to a variable like this, like P, if I can write P plus one, could I write something like P equals P plus one? And in fact, is there anything I can do with an integer that I can't do with a pointer? And I'll spoil that. You can't do multiplication or division. But we know a lot about plus operators in this course. We've spent a lot of time talking about all the different ways to add and subtract. What about those? If I can add or subtract 1 or 5 or 7 from a pointer, can't I use any of those other plus operators? And the answer, of course, is absolutely. Um, so what about this? P plus plus and Q plus plus. We know already that these operators have a meaning. They refer to the uh, operation of incrementing a variable. Why can't we use them with pointers? And the answer is, well, we can. We can perform any arithmetic we want, plus or minus on pointers, including all the different forms of syntactic sugar that we use for addition and subtraction. So I'm gonna run P plus plus. What this expands to is basically, I want to add one to the arrow stored in P, and then store that back into P. Okay, so if I take this arrow, which points at the 17, at index zero of A, and I add one to it, well then I suppose when I'm done, P is going to point up here to index one of A. And if I add one to the arrow that uh, is contained in the variable Q, then I'm pointing to the next thing along, so the value 2.4. So we'll try that. And there it is. So P now points to 6, and Q points to the value 2.4. Okay, great. So we can, of course, uh, use the plus plus operator. It shouldn't surprise you to learn that we can also use the minus minus operator. And you might think, well, that's no big deal. I can draw a diagram. I can add one to an arrow, and I can move the arrows. I can shuffle them around between the various elements of an array. You might want to ask yourself, what if the pointer doesn't point inside of an array? What if it just points to a regular variable? What if I add a number to the pointer then. And you can do it. It turns out that it results in um, stepping on strange invalid memory. A different video will talk about that, but it's also valid. It's just not a good idea to do pointer arithmetic unless you know that the thing that you're referring to when you add one or subtract one is actually going to be something valid. So for example, if you have a pointer to the inside of an array. But if you weren't scared already, if you're, if you're thinking, oh, that wasn't a big deal, I went for this whole walk around the block and looked at the leaves, Bill. Why did I need to do that? Okay, fine, fair enough, let's keep going. And then we get to this. And you might remember seeing the plus plus operator stuck inside of brackets in the middle of some complicated and you know terrifying expression on midterm one and then finishing midterm one, getting back your mark and then thinking, okay, finally, I don't have to worry about that anymore. No, I'm sorry, we were just getting started. So if I can use plus plus, on a pointer, and I can use star on a pointer, and I can remember from before midterm one, I've got that big precedence table telling me about all the various operators, then what's stopping me from combining them? Well, nothing. Obviously, I'm allowed to do whatever I want. I have all of these operators. As long as I take care for the types to line up, I'm allowed to use them. I'm allowed to combine them. And it turns out, we'll see later, uh, whoops, it turns out that we'll see later, I don't even need to have the brackets if I don't want to. But we'll leave them in. We'll be humane. Okay, so what happens if I do this? Um, it's the last example for this video. I'm going to try and position it so that you can view it uh, over the diagram. I'm going to need two new things on my diagram here. Oh, that's going to be fun. I guess I'll have to put them here. So there's x and there is y, and x is an int, and y is a float. Okay, so I'm preparing them for what I ultimately have to do. The first line is, x gets the value of ooh, star p plus plus. Okay, so what does this actually mean? What this is saying is, increment the pointer p, and then send out, as the result of the expression, the old value of the pointer p, and then take that old value and follow the arrow 
and put the result in x. There is a lot happening here, but it's valid. I'm allowed to do this, and it actually turns out that idiomatically in real C code, you will occasionally see things like this. Often you will see it uh, without the uh, brackets because people who, don't, who learn they don't need the brackets eventually stop adding them, but this is a valid operation. Let's try walking through it. Okay, so P++. This is saying update the arrow P, uh, update the pointer P to contain an arrow to the thing one to the right, so P++, increment the arrow, but what comes out of the brackets is the old value of P. What is the old value of P? Okay, I'm gonna try and draw that as Currently, before I've done the operation, the old value of P is an arrow pointing at A sub 1. So I'm just going to draw that in. An arrow pointing at A sub 1. Okay. And then I update P. So P++ means I have to update P. So P now points at the next thing over, A sub 2. Okay, so then I've got this arrow pointing at A sub 1, and I follow the arrow. Okay, so X, so I have arrow pointing A sub 1, that would be, uh, loosely speaking, this arrow here. It's not stored anywhere right now, it's just part of a, an expression I'm evaluating. I have this arrow here, and then I follow the arrow, I put a star on it. So the expression I was evaluating turns into arrow pointing at A sub 1, follow the arrow. So I have an arrow, I follow the arrow, and I get the value um, 6. Okay, so X equals 6. Now we're back in familiar territory, we're used to setting X to 6 in this course, great y equals star of plus plus q. And actually, I'm going to take some liberties here. Let's, let's make some space because I probably want to draw my, on my code. Okay, so star plus plus q. Okay, well, let's do the plus plus q first. Mercifully, there are some brackets in this example. So when I say plus plus q, what I'm saying is update the value q by incrementing it by 1, and then send back the new value of q. Okay, so I'll update it, and then we'll worry about its new value. So I update it, which means incrementing it, adding 1 to q. Okay, so q used to point here. I move it over by 1 to the right. I add 1. Now it points at the 5.5. And then what comes out, the new value of q, I'll actually draw that in. It's an arrow pointing at b sub 3. Okay, so I have an arrow pointing at b sub 3. Three. It's a weird slanted B. Okay, so that's what comes out of the brackets, and then I follow that arrow. So conceptually, I've got this arrow sort of floating around in space, pointing at um, B sub 3, this arrow I've created as part of my expression, and now follow that arrow. So I follow that arrow, I get the value 5.5. And you can also verify that when you evaluate these expressions, the types do match up. If I take uh, the result of star of plus plus q, that's a float star. If I follow the arrow, I get a float. The float can be stored in float y. That looks good. Same story up here. p plus plus, well, that's a pointer. If I increment a pointer, I get a new pointer. So int star, I follow an arrow, I get to an int. And so the types line up. And we know already that by the rules of how pointers work, if the types line up, we should be good to go. And it turns out that we are. So we put the value 5.5 into y, and then we clean up our mess over here on the left-hand side. And then we try running this. And then I'll give you a moment between videos to, to you know, appreciate the, the strange world that we've entered at this point. We've gone from knowing nothing about programming in September to knowing quite a bit about programming in early October, being able to write some pretty interesting code to do some interesting stuff, and then right back down into this horrendous soup of notation that we're going to be wading through for the next few videos. So I save that. We'll try running it. Actually, we'll clear this first, and then we'll try running it, and then we'll see what happens. And there it is. So let's see, star p is 10, that looks good. Star q is 5.5, that looks good. x is equal to 6, and y is equal to 5.5. And if, you know, if you thought that was lots of fun, that's great, because those expression questions you remember from midterm 1, they're going to come back on midterm 2, but this time they're going to be full of all sorts of things like star and plus plus.